Hey everyone, it's Mike Hughes from Lord of Minis, at Lord of Minis on Instagram. Today we are going to tackle part one of my tutorial on how to paint the Broodmother, a fairly large boss miniature from the game Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood by Shadowborn Games. Here she is with only a face a mother could love. She has brood on her back, tearing her flesh off. For all the parents out there, she's here with a message that things will get better as they get older. Maybe, but probably not. Here's our first set of base colors, AK Grim Brown, AK German Field Gray, AK Faded Green, and Citadel Air Baneblade Brown. We're gonna start here with our Vallejo airbrush thinner, the 71.161. This is about how much you're going to put in your airbrush. We wanna keep these colors nice and thin, but not too thin. We're gonna start with our German field gray, and we're gonna be mixing this with the Grim Brown to give it a nice dark coat. The trick here is to put enough in with the thinner so that it can easily push through the airbrush. A lot of people think you just throw the paint in. It's not the case. You wanna keep it nice and thin. So here we go with the, the Grim Brown, just to darken it a little bit. And this is gonna be our base coat for the overall model. I've mentioned it in other tutorials. Um, if you have an old crappy brush that's laying around, this is the perfect use for it. That's the consistency that we need right there. Kind of a milky consistency. You can see the coverage here. This is what we're looking for. So it's still a relatively dark color. It's going to give a nice undertone to the fur. And we're going to start to really think out this fur. Um, obviously, the mother's age is older than her young rats on her back. Um... So she's going to have this sort of muddy, grayish, old type fur, whereas they're going to have a slightly warmer color to them later on when we paint that. So you can see here, this is the color. We've left a little black in there, but the majority of it's painted with this gray-green color. Next up is Faded Green by AK Interactive. This is in the same sort of color range as what we're dealing with, the muted green, green, gray type colors. So you can see how this looks. Now, you're not gonna see my airbrush on screen here. I'm actually gonna be shooting the top of his head here. You can kind of see the spray a little bit. You can see the color changing. Oh, there's a piece of something on there. You can see that it it's just giving actually kind of a nice mid-tone color and it blends in well with, with our, uh, our darker color underneath. Next up is Beam Blade Brown by Citadel Air. You don't need to do much with this. You don't need to add much thinner at all. It's prepared for the airbrush. We're going to start to hit less surface area now. We're going to, because we're, we're using a lighter color here, but we're still going to hit enough. You can see we hit the tail, the top of the head, all of the brood on her back. That just gives sort of a nice slight warmth to some of the areas. Here's our 
second set of base colors we're going to use. Starting with Dark Plum, which is a, a pro acryl paint by Monument Hobbies. If you guys have not checked out the Pro Acryl line, it's absolutely amazing. They have very saturated paints. They're a little thinner, so you don't have to use as much thinner, or you can add more paint to the thinner. So we've kept the paint relatively thin because we're going to use this micro air control valve on this Iwata Highline HPBH. What we can do is we can really turn down the pressure so we can create these very fine lines where the paint comes out at a much, much, much slower rate. So you can get very close to your model. You can see we're going to be using this dark plum on all the fleshy areas of our miniature, the ears, the tongue, uh, hands, tail, the tails of all of the brood. This is sort of our, our dark underlying coat for all those areas. So this is what it looks like. Does it need to be incredibly precise? There's a little bit of overspray in areas, not a big deal. Next up is Bordeaux Red by AK Interactive. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this lighter reddish paint. It's a bit on the blue side. We're gonna create some translucency in some of the areas of our base coating. So in the ear, you know, the ear's not just going to be one color. It's going to have an effect on it. And we're going to add that Bordeaux red to some of the areas inside the ear. We're going to add on the tail just to give it a nice mid-tone. Then we're going to take Old Rose, which is in the same color range. And we're going to add that as a lighter mid-tone color with the same idea. We're starting to add shape to our miniature. So you can see the gradations from the dark to the light. And so we're going to be doing this on the hands, the ears, the tails. just to give it some depth. So I'm just gonna play this video out a little bit longer of where I'm airbrushing, just to give you some context as to the areas in which I, I'm applying the, uh, the, lighter, the lighter colors here. And you can see I've really turned down the air pressure on, on, my, on my airbrush and I'm just hitting small, small areas. To give shape to a model, you always start with, like let's say on the tail here, the darker color goes on the majority of it and as you're moving towards the light source with your colors. The colors will take up less space on your miniature. That'll sort of give you that, the volume you need across your miniature. We also can't forget about the belly there. Um, in the belly area, we wanna make sure that it gets light enough for an OSL effect that we're gonna do 
not in this part one tutorial, but later in, a, in possibly the part two or three. You can see I'm just adding some volume to these tiny little tails. Next up, we're going to use Sickly Pink by AK Interactive. And again, we're adding more volume. You can see now it almost looks like a nice highlight on top of the tail there. We're going to go throughout our miniature and just hit some smaller areas with that sickly pink. And you can see that it, it gives it this sort of flesh tone that we that we need, especially in a like a rat tail, right? So looks great there. We're going to absolutely hit the belly with this. We really need to lighten the belly up for a green OSL in the end. And that's the end of base coating. We're going to move on to brush now. And you can see by base coating with multiple colors, we really added some dimension up front. It'll help us out in the end. We're gonna start now with green gray and German field gray. We're gonna do a nice light consistency, mixing it with water. And if you've seen my skin tutorial, um, we're gonna do something kind of similar. We're gonna work in the creases and on top of areas seeing the light seeing that the light would be shining down I'm, I'm always going from the upper right down on a model so we're going to go into some of these creases on top of the the fur lining on, around the eye and when we go into the crease we go to the top of the crease And we leave the mid-tones underneath. Again, to give it some volume. We're also working with texture here. So we're going to have to dot in, create some lines, follow the hair of the miniature. Again, taking that point, working in the crease, creating some texture. This thing has got a lot of hair, but we don't necessarily need to paint every last hair we can give the illusion of hair being darker and lighter in areas so you can you can cover the most important thing is just covering in the crease the creases so you can see I go up into the crease leave the shadow below and then above so if you're painting inside the crease you can see that there's a shadow above in the in the top fold we're also going to paint the top of the eye and the top of the head because the light is hitting those areas more intensely and you can see i'm kind of drawing uh, my brush on the side over the top and as I do so you can see some of the texture being pulled out this model is highly textured so you can kind of use that technique in some of the areas especially where 
the the um the, that that pronounced texture is meeting meeting the head you can see all that texture on the body we'll end up doing that in a separate tutorial Next up, we're just going to go in with the gray green, keep it light, mixing a little bit of our, our other mixture into it. You don't want the mixture to be too, it kind of looked watery. Uh, you don't want it to be too watery. You want the paint to hold on the model. So you can see I'm going back into the same areas and I'm I'm not going to do quite as much surface area the lighter uh, the colors that we apply the smaller the surface area we're going to apply that the lighter colors too to give it volume and dimension. So you can see I'm building in some texture. This miniature is a lot of fun because it is so large that you can really play around with texture on this thing because the, the surface area is just so so huge it's not like you're doing a a 45 millimeter miniature here this is a much larger one so you can see the texture being built into the top of the head we're going to start to go into those creases again and you can use kind of whatever technique you want i'm just dotting in dotting in texture here like miniature little lines and I'm definitely not hitting as much surface area next up is dark ivory by pro acryl monument hobbies we're gonna mix some of that in with a little bit of the green we had and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the teeth with this and you're going to see it's going to go on fairly light. I'm going to need two or three coats. But you can also see that I'm not just painting inside and around and in the entire tooth. I'm leaving the shadow in there. I'm leaving the, the dark black in between the teeth. You want to make sure that that you retain those shadow areas we're going to again paint all the teeth we're going to apply a wash inside there's quite a few different ways to paint bone um, and usually if it's skulls and things like the horns ivory I have a completely different way of painting those things Sometimes what I like to do with teeth, especially with this rat, um, the teeth are supposed to be relatively disgusting. And so here's the second coat here. Um, they're supposed to be disgusting. So, you know, they're probably yellowed. They probably or have like a, a reddish brown tinge to them. That's what we're going to end up going for. And then we're also going to build in some texture. You're going to see coming back to this, this ivory color after we do the washes. So you see, I have a Vallejo dark brown wash. You could use a Citadel Reichland flesh shade has a bit of a red tint to it. Um, Agrax Earthshade would definitely make it look dark and muddy. You can also see I'm pulling 
the wash off the tooth. You just saw that kind of like I was doing a magic trick. Um, all you have to do to pull wash off is get your brush to be relatively dry and then just put your uh, brush right on the wash and it'll just soak right back in, into the brush. This is what we got for our yellowed teeth. We're going to move on while that wash is drying to um, our, our flesh tone areas. These are the colors we're going to be using. And we're going to start to work in all of the fleshy areas. We want to give this both a look of translucency, but we also want to make sure that it has this sort of fleshy look to it. So we're building in volume to all the little areas. There's a lot of little raised areas. There are some little veins. We'll, we'll hit that with some red in a little bit. You can see already the volume starting to change. I'm working in really thin layers in some of these areas because we're going to be layering not just building color, but we're going to be layering some color in. So just making it a little thicker here so you can see. You can, you can see all of a sudden the volume's changing. Focus is also changing, which sucks. I apologize for the autofocus going crazy. Next up is Deep Red by AK Interactive. This is a really nice saturated red color. We're going to be applying this in several, several of the areas, one of which is way up inside the tongue area. To give you a little bit better vantage point, uh, I flipped the model around here. You can see we're drawing now the edge of the brush just along the edge of the tongue and the edge of the middle of it. Which gives that tongue some volume. Look at that face. The brood mother is wondering why the brood father forgot to make dinner. So we're going to take that that red color and in, in go over the bridge of the nose, bridging the colors a little bit more. We're going to take our lighter tone here. and start to create some highlights. Again, building up the volume. Now that looks like the, to, to me that the light is reflecting off the nose, but it's not. It's the paint doing that volumetric trick. So that's kind of what we're going for. We're trying to make it some areas look wet and that's to bring up another point is that we're really painting materials. So when you go and you paint these areas like flesh, you have to think about what the actual material is. Is it wet? Is it metal? Is it fabric? And once you determine the material, you can then determine how much contrast to build into what you're painting because materials really are about the level of contrast. A non-metallic metal painting, it has a really enormous amount of contrast to it. 
whereas a fabric won't have that contrast. The gradient, the gradation will be more subtle. You can see we painted some of those raised surfaces there. It's really, she's really starting to look good in terms of the volume of her face. We're gonna go back to the teeth with this ivory color, basically pure ivory. And what I want to do is I want to retain the sort of weathered, for lack of a better term, the, the weathered part of the, the tooth. I want to retain it at the top. And I want the lighter colors to be at the bottom. I'm also drawing the brush across in these, in these lines because I want to build some texture in. Teeth aren't just flat, they have some texture to them. So I'm just flipping the model around here. You can also add the texture this way by drawing it from top down. You can see we're not painting the whole surface, we're just painting it from the from the tips of the teeth sort of up to create a textured gradation. So here's what we got so far. Some nice volume built in. We're gonna move to the eyes. We're gonna use luminous green, frog green, light green, and dark green from AK Interactive. And this essentially is gonna be our gradation. We're not gonna really mix these. This is the palette. We're just gonna go from one to the next. I'm using a very small brush for this. This is a two slash zero size brush. We're going to start with the dark green. And with the dark green, we're just going to paint the entire eye. And as we move down to the lighter colors, we're going to paint less and less surface area to sort of build up the volume of that eye and also make it look like it's glowing. This would would not sort of be unlike painting a, a gem, although a gem refracts from the inside, so you you paint the highlights and mintones a little differently. This is just gonna be pretty straight up. We're gonna move to our light green. And we're going to kind of hit from the middle of the eye to almost the top of the eye, leaving below the dark green, just below the middle. And you can see the size we're working with because you can, you can see my fingerprint in relation to both the size of the eye there and the size of the brush. It's a very, very small area. So next we're gonna move to frog green. The greens are moving from the bluer tone greens to now the more yellowish tone greens. We're going to paint even less surface area. And now we're moving to luminous green, which is very yellow. And we're really just going to put like a dot on there. And that's going to make it look like that eye is glowing. So there's the eye.
we're going to use this uh, technical paint here called Crimson Hue, Alizarin Crimson Hue. I always pronounce that wrong. It's by Golden. You can see this is it dried at the top here. It's a very glossy, translucent red. And if you're a Citadel person, it's a good analog for blood, for the blood god. I like to use this um, because the, I like the translucency of it. It blends really well with the underlying colors. It doesn't overpower. It uh, goes on nice and light. And this is obviously it's great for cuts. This is what I'm using it for right now. The brood mother actually has large patches of skin basically ripped off which is disgusting obviously uh, but we're going to use this for those large patches in the next tutorial um there's the the eye we back off here there's the large patch you can see of the areas of the skin sort of ripped off on the side the face is looking great so with that red we're gonna we're gonna do this at a later date but we're gonna basically fill in that entire area there and there's a bunch of those areas around the, the model so that's the end of the Broodmother tutorial part one of just base coating and doing the face. We're looking pretty good with the face. We might continue to do a little bit more texture work in the following tutorials, but we're getting there. It's starting to look pretty vicious. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in part two.